Well, happy holidays, everybody. Uh, good afternoon on this uh, beautiful and chilly uh, December day. On behalf of the uh, Parkinson's Resource Center, um, I'd like to welcome you uh, to today's uh, telehealth session here in, out of Spokane, Washington. Uh, my name is Frank Chalet with the Parkinson's Resource Center, and I'd like to uh, thank our friends with Northwest Telehealth for putting today's program on, uh, especially Mark Harger, who's with us today. Thank you, Mark. And uh, St. Luke's Rehab Center for hosting today's event here and providing all the goodies for us in the back. As always, I'd like to thank our partner, Northwest Parkinson's out of Seattle, and all of our supporters out there, including Albertsons, uh, and our uh, folks out there that um, volunteers and board members who spend a lot of time and energy uh, making this come together. Uh, thank, thank you to all of you uh, for your efforts and helping us bring this outstanding program to you every month. So as always, uh, we'd ask you to hold your questions till the end for those of you that are new to telehealth. Uh, so please do uh, mute your microphones, those of you in the remote sites, and we'll ask you to turn those back on when it comes time for question and answer. And uh, as we've been doing the last few months, just to remind everybody, especially in our remote sites, that as we do call on you for the Q&A, we'll want to take attendance uh, to see how many of you are in attendance today. I'm uh, very pleased. Uh, we've got a couple exciting things going on today. Uh, you'll note a uh, beautiful little keyboard up here. Uh, one of the things that we'll look forward to uh, here in Spokane after today's program is uh, some beautiful music, Christmas music, and a sing-along uh, brought to you by our local support group, our singing group, Tremble Clef. So we're excited to have them today. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to announce today's program. Uh, our speaker is Dr. Darrell Volweiler. She's a uh, cougar. She's also a Stanford Cardinal, where she did her postdoc work. Uh, very ap apropos to work uh, that caregivers provide, and she'll tell you more about that. Uh, she's with us today. She's a psychologist in independent practice. She owns her own practice. And she's going to talk to us today about an important topic, and it's about how to have a healthy and happy holiday and avoid the stressors, especially for patients and all those affected uh, by Parkinson's disease. So uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Volweiler. Tested this more thoroughly before I think we started. We have to move it okay. Like You're all witnessing this, right? He's behaving himself. Okay, okay there we go. Oh, I think we're set. Okay, can everyone hear me? Okay. It's a little on the quiet side. Let's see. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Usually, I'm not accused of being quiet, so that's nice. I like that. <laughs> Um, and, and just so you know, I'm holding the microphone in, in my hand because we, there's, the little clip is missing. So if I do some odd things, I apologize in advance. And I'll try to keep this close as possible here. I am Dr. Darrell Volweiler. And just to give you a very brief uh, sentence or two on my experience, I interned at the Palo Alto VA, where I specialized in what we used to call medical psychology, we now call behavioral medicine, which is working with people with chronic health conditions. So that was then. Then during my postdoc years, I specialized in caregiving and family research. So I got a lot of experience with those people who are caring for loved ones with Parkinson's or with other chronic health conditions. So that's where it all started, and then I moved to Spokane, and I hooked up with a neurologist who has been referring me a lot of patients, and then eventually I ended up doing pre-surgical psychological evaluations for people having deep brain stimulation surgery. So I actually know some of you in the room, but I won't point you out because that would be breaching confidentiality. So if you break your own, that's your issue, but I, I won't be doing that. Um, I actually... When asked to talk today, I was thinking, well, you know, I usually talk on really serious topics like uh, when people with Parkinson's and or their caregivers develop anxiety or develop depression 
and I talk about ways to alleviate those types of symptoms. However, that just didn't seem very much in the holiday spirit. It seems kind of depressing to talk about depression. So I thought, well, I'll just do a little lighthearted talk on how to deal with holiday stress. Because the, the fact is, I'm not, this is not rocket science that I'm presenting today. All of you know all of these things. But I know for myself, I don't very often do the things I know I'm supposed to do. And so it never hurts to have an extra reminder, does it? Especially during a very stressful time. So I hope you'll just enjoy it and maybe be reminded of something that you'd kind of put on the back shelf to help you have a happier and healthier holiday. Okay, now I have to remember which button to hit here. Return, return, return. And it will enter work? Oh, good, okay. I do know how to use a computer, really. That's just not mine. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> OK, so um, the question I like to ask is, why are the holidays more stressful than any other time of the year? I mean, for heaven's sakes, you know, we're, there's stress all the time in all of our lives. Well, one of the reasons is if you or your loved one has Parkinson's disease, that makes your life just a little bit more stressful than the average person's life anyway. And so when you add the holiday stuff on top of it, you have a little bit more stress during the holidays. And so you really have to consider that and try to modify how you handle a holiday season. And if you don't think about it before it gets here, then you're caught off guard, right? The other reason is that people in general, we as human beings, have unrealistic expectations around the holidays. Not only are our expectations unrealistic, but so are those in our family and our friends. And if you have a workplace, everyone around you has these expectations that you're going to do everything, finish everything on time, you know, cook everything really well, get all the right gifts, all of that sort of thing. So we want to really look at our expectations during the holidays. Other things, financial stressors. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but every year I panic just a little bit because I kind of have my monthly budget throughout the year that goes fairly well most of the time. And then the holidays come and there are gifts to buy and there's food and there's just all these extra expenses. And then, you know, your brakes go out or something. You know, there's always something that happens at the last minute that you don't expect. So there are financial stressors associated with the holidays, and we can do some things about that. We don't have to be so stressed by that. Time pressures, that's an obvious one. We have the same amount of time in a day. We have a whole lot more to get done in that time period. So, you know, what do we do with that time? Do we not sleep? Well, that's not a very good idea. So what exactly do we do to deal with those time pressures? Um, I don't know if any of you in the room are working, but you certainly have, you may work, you may have volunteer positions. I mean, many of you are volunteers for the Parkinson's Resource Center. You have children, you have grandchildren, and they are stressful all by themselves. Travel, um, many people travel during the holidays. I per personally find it very stressful to travel during the holidays, and I try very hard not to do it. So, you know, you have your choice, you can do it or not, but you have to really plan for it if you're going to do it. Grief, guilt, and other difficult feelings. Well, grief, you know, often people during the holidays um, remember certain people who aren't here anymore. I know my grandfather a couple years ago died just a few days after Christmas. And um, so every year my family starts to remember my grandfather. Not that we don't remember him other times of the year, but for some reason the holidays really evoke those memories. So that's something to deal with that you don't otherwise have to deal with during maybe the rest of the year. And guilt. Um, I would say as a psychologist, one of the primary reasons people come to see me is because of guilt. And I don't know if that's because of their upbringing in some cases. Sometimes it's a particular religion that might, you know, encourage feelings of guilt. Um, you have to look at these things and say, well, what do I feel guilty about? And during the holidays, a lot of people feel guilt because they're not doing the things they think they should do. So that goes back to those expectations. 
Okay, so that's why holidays can be more stressful than the rest of the year. Now, what are we going to do about that? Well, I like to say we need to keep the blues where they belong, somewhere else, not here, not inside us. So we're going to work on the blues by doing a couple of things. Actually, it's more than a couple, but I will go fast because I've been told not to speak more than 25 minutes. So um, we want to avoid denial. Well, denial is when we're trying to pretend something isn't there that really is there. And sometimes that actually makes us feel more anxious, more depressed, more stressed. So by acknowledging your feelings, acknowledge your stressors, acknowledge your feelings, just sit down and say, okay, I know that I have this stress. I know it's bothering me. So what am I going to do about it? Is there something different I can do to help me through this? Uh, remind yourself, too, that, you know, pretty much for the most part, we get through the holidays and we get to the other side and it's January and we're okay. So when you're in the middle of it, just try to remind yourself of that. Keep it in perspective. Be realistic. Plan ahead. Now, I am not the greatest at planning ahead. Um, if I were, all of you in the other remote areas would have my outline. <laughs> but you don't because I'm not the greatest at planning ahead. So when I say this to you, I know that I struggle with it myself. But if you just sit down with your family and say, let's make a plan for the holidays and let's keep it as simple as possible. You know, there's no reason why we have to have, you know, grandma's spread of food that we've had for 20 years because this year we just have a little more stress in our lives. So we're going to keep it simple. We're going to ask people maybe to bring some food and maybe otherwise we wouldn't do that. And decorations. You know, we all love decorations, but you don't have to put up every single thing that you have, the five box big plastic boxes of Christmas decorations that you have in your basement. So you don't have to do all of that. Um, delegating. You know, I threw in Santa and his reindeer and elves. I mean, you know, Santa doesn't do it all by himself. Why do you have to do it by yourself? You know, ask your family for help. Um, most of us have, I don't know how many families I've heard about that Mom still does everything, and mom's 72. And, you know, there's children and there's grandchildren that are all adults and capable of helping, but they're just used to showing up and sitting down and eating their food and opening their gifts. And it's really not only okay to ask for help, it's really a reasonable thing to do. Um, last year, I talked to my mom about let's do a Christmas Eve party instead of a big Christmas Eve dinner and have everyone bring an appetizer and whatever they want to drink. And it was a blast. And it was really easy for my mom, and it was really easy for me, which, you know, I, I look for that too. So there's a lot of different ways to do things. Okay, these next ones, it's really important to expect that when you get all of your family together in one room, if you do that, there's going to be some discord. There's going to be some conflict. People have old, old conflicts that come up whenever the family's together. So just know that it's probably going to happen and just ask yourself in advance, how do you want to deal with that? You know, one of the ways I deal with a difficult relative, and I can think of who that person is, but who knows, this is being taped, so I won't say it. <laughs> what I do is I, I really try to ignore when I see certain topics coming up, because I know there are push button topics that come up that she and I often will disagree about. So when those happen, I just kind of smile. And the best thing in the world to do when someone is in conflict or trying to engage you in a conflict is to smile and say, you're right. And they love that. And they don't know what to say after that, because they're ready to engage in a battle. And when you just say you're right and change the subject, Battle's over. Changing the subject is my favorite thing to do. So give it a try. And don't try to solve old family problems. Um, I've heard of family gatherings where uh, people decide that's the time to resolve that 20-year-old issue with my brother Steve. Well, 
probably not the best idea. And if it's a 20-year-old issue, it is likely that it's not going to get resolved. And so just, you know, don't bother with that kind of stuff. Enjoy your day. Just focus on the fun. Okay, now this top one, we're going to talk about a little bit more in just a second. Focus on healthy behaviors. Now, all year long, we do unhealthy behaviors. We're human beings. We're not ever going to be perfect. But if you try to focus on those special days and the special season that we're in right now, on just trying to be as healthy as you can be today, don't worry about tomorrow or the next day. Just say, what can I do today that's good for me? And we're going to talk about what some of those things are in just a minute. Seek support. One of the things people do when they get stressed is they isolate. Because if I just can be by myself for a little bit, I can focus on this and I can get it done and, you know, everything will be okay. What happens as you isolate is you feel... You feel lonely. You feel like you're the only person in the world that's dealing with this problem. Uh, you feel like no one in your family is there to help and none of your friends are there. And you, you can even, you can really start catastrophizing in your head about that you don't have any friends, nobody likes you, that sort of thing. We can all go there if we let ourselves. So what I recommend to people is seek out people that you enjoy. Whether it's a friend, whether it's a family member, whether you decide, I'm going to go to this support group or this educational program. You know, you all are doing this today to take care of yourselves. So there's a good example right there. Don't try to figure out what will make others happy. I don't know how many of you try to do this, but it's called mind reading. And when you try to read someone's mind, there's a 99.9% .9 chance, and I made that up, that you are wrong. If you ask a person what they need, what they expect, or what they want, they are likely to tell you. And if they don't tell you, then it's their own problem. You know, you don't have to worry about it. But if you try to figure it out, you're often going to get it wrong. And if you think someone else can read your mind and know what you want, need, or expect, that's not helpful either because they can't read your mind. I don't know how many of you have had this experience, but I certainly have where I thought someone was mad at me and I stewed about it and stewed about it and stewed about it and I went over and over in my head what I said, what they said, what I did, what they did, and then three or four days later I'd go to them and say, I've been thinking about this and I'm so sorry and I just want you to know, and they, what are you talking about? And they didn't even remember it. They had no idea that I thought they were mad at me because they weren't. So don't read minds. It's not helpful. Share your wish list with others. If you have, again, need some help with something, let people know. They can't know. It seems intuitive that they would know. If you, have, if you are a person with Parkinson's or you are a loved one who lives with the person with Parkinson's, don't other people know that you need help? You'd think that they should, but again, that's expecting them to read your mind. They don't know what kind of help you need. And they see, oh, they're doing okay. They're probably fine. They don't need me. So ask. Let them know what you need. My favorite tip is let some things wait until January. Because, yay! <laughs> because that's what I do. And my friends and family know that in January maybe even push in February, they're going to get their holiday card from me. <laughs> and it has a really funny, entertaining, in my opinion, letter that goes with it. And they look forward to it. At least they tell me they look forward to it. And that's all that I care about is that they tell me they look forward to it. <clears throat> so I get my letters out after the first of the year. I still try to at least get the card and the letter ready before the first of the year, but if I don't, I don't because I've already given myself permission to send them late. Um, another thing that I decided to do this year, I have a friend that uh, owns the Coeur d'Alene Olive Oil Company. I just gave her a plug. And she sells these bottles of olive oil that have etched in them thank you, and she encourages them as, as gifts for you know like people who refer clients to me and that sort of thing. 
And I thought, what a great idea. And then I got all stressed out about getting that done before January 1st. And I reminded myself, I don't have to. They're going to appreciate being thanked in January, February, March. It doesn't matter. So give yourself permission to save some things until January. And really quick, because I'm running out of time, I will go to the last slide. Some simple changes that can help. And I cannot believe I forgot to put sleep on here. That's like the number one thing. One of the things we do to ourselves when we're stressed is we take an hour or two out of our sleep because we think, well, I need an extra hour. How am I going to get it? Well, I just won't sleep as long. That is the absolute wrong thing to do because when you are sleep deprived, your, your tendency, your body will be more fatigued. You will be more anxious. You will be more depressed. You will suffer. So you will be more productive if you sleep. So I'm sorry, I can't believe I forgot that one, but that's number one. Of course, as people with Parkinson's, I know you're all encouraged to be as active as you can, to exercise whenever you can, and don't stop that during the holidays. It's your priority. It's how you take care of yourself. If you miss a day, okay, no big deal, but don't stop. Make sure you stay active during the holidays. Meditation and relaxation are things that many of you may know how to do. If you don't, there are um, a lot of uh, tapes, CDs out there on how to relax or how to meditate, and it's just a nice way to clear your mind when during a stressful time. And it's something that I struggle with because it requires me to sit down, slow down, and stop. And so I have to put it in my schedule if I'm going to get it done. Pleasurable events, and I'll put time to yourself in there because I think they go well together. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting, the research on pleasure. What it shows us is that if we allow ourselves moments of pleasure, and it doesn't have to be huge, long events, but if you find four times a day that you have moments of pleasure, whether it be just spending time with a friend and talking, reading something you enjoy, it can be anything that you are less likely to be depressed. So you have to have fun. You have to enjoy your life, and that's really, really important. And then respite, that's for, especially for those of you that are caregivers. You know, if you need some time away, uh, get some help so that you can have that time away. It's really important, especially during the holidays. Maybe you need to go shopping and you need a little help at home. Get some respite. And eat as healthy as you can, but enjoy your favorites. You know, holidays are wonderful times full of lots of fabulous food, and we don't want to gain 20 pounds during the holidays, but we also don't want to deprive ourselves of those pleasures. So eat healthy during most days, and then on those special occasions, just enjoy the food. And most of all, just really remember the spirit of the holiday, enjoy your loved ones, enjoy your, your family and your friends, and take time for yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Volweiler. Uh, always good practical points to remind ourselves. We take for granted that uh, we're going to remember all these things each and every day, so it's always good to be reminded. So uh, thank you for that. Ex excellent uh, update for all of us. And as always, uh, have the remote sites. Go ahead and turn on your microphones uh, when we're ready to go to Q&A. Um, so I'd like to start first uh, with our friends out in Anchorage, Alaska. Do you have any questions, please? And how many in attendance? She was, I mean, she covered. Two? Any questions, Anchorage? I can't tell if your mic is on. And we can always come back to you if we miss you, okay, if you have a question. Uh, Billings, Montana. There are four of us, and excellent uh, talk. Okay. All right, thanks for being with us today. Uh, Clarkston, Tri-State. Thank you. We're here. There's 18 of us, wow. and no questions today. Thank you. Excellent. You guys have good cookies there? <laughs> You're a little late. <laughs> <laughs> we had some really good ones here. 
Uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Kootenai Medical Center. Yes, uh, good program. We have a question. And how many in attendance, please? Uh, it was six, I guess. Thank you. Oh. Go, ahead. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Question? Oh. Okay. Question? Well, it, more of an idea that you just prompted in my mind. We have several of the family that will be coming in to the airport, and we have to meet them, of course, and there's about a 45-minute drive home. I thought that might be a good time to talk about their plans and expectations for the holiday and maybe assign some tasks. <laughs> oh, what a great idea. You were listening. Good job. Yeah, did all of you, uh, well, hopefully all of you heard that. Um, what a great time to talk about family expectations and assign tasks, which is during the, I'm sorry, is there no, everything okay? okay? During the 45-minute drive from the airport. I love that. I'm going to include that in my next talk. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We're finished as well. In fact, if uh, instead of asking them what they want to do, I, you might want to just make the list in advance and just tell them what they're going to do. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> With some of my family, that's exactly what you have to do. You know. Um, okay, um, folks out in Colville, uh, Providence Mount Carmel Hospital. Well, we had uh, three people here at one time, but uh, there's nobody here but me now, and I don't really have any questions. Well, thank you for uh, holding on. Uh, Dayton General Hospital. Uh, Dayton, any questions? Okay. We can always come back to you. Uh, Grangeville, Idaho. Syringa General. Okay. Uh, moving on to Kennewick General Hospital, our friends in the Tri-Cities. They've all got parties going on, you can just tell. They took me seriously about taking care of themselves and they left. <laughs> yeah, see, they took your advice. <laughs> okay, moving on to uh, to the west side, to Kirkland, Evergreen Healthcare. Any questions, folks? Or ideas? No questions. And how many do you have in attendance, please? Three. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Okay, back to Montana, Miles City. Beautiful Miles City, Montana. Any questions, folks? Okay. Uh, Moses Lake, Samaritan. There are eight of us here today. And um, um, what did you want to ask, Helmut? I was curious to know uh, what type of uh, relaxation and meditation you were uh, thinking of. Um, that's a really good. That's a really good Sorry, there's an echo. <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, I meant to bring you a list of websites that you could look up, and I really apologize that I did not. And I'm wondering if I can get that information. To you guys, to the PRC, sure. To the PRC, and then shoot it out to the rest of you next week or uh, sometime because somehow I, I ended up without that list. We can put that on the website. Okay, but there are um, specifically certain types of relaxation. There's one called guided imagery that I particularly like, and that's where and sometime maybe I could come and do some exercises um, for the group. But with guided imagery. You listen to a person's voice that guides you to a specific place in your mind. And by taking you somewhere else, an imaginary place, you, your body relaxes and your brain relaxes and you stop worrying about things in the present. And so if you find something that says guided imagery, that's a good, a good one to try. Um, meditation is specifically focusing your mind on a very simple, neutral object so that you clear your mind of all your worries. So really, they're all focused on both body and mind relaxation. But I'm sorry I don't have specific examples for you, but I will get them to you. Thank you. Thank you. I did uh, yoga for the first time this week, 
and I always thought it was just this little easy little thing to do. <laughs> Anybody that's ever done yoga? Oh, man. I thought I was tough. Not after that. But it's interesting because they use some of the same techniques as far as the relaxation piece for yoga and, and uh, focusing. So great advice. Yep. Great advice. Okay, let's move on to uh, Pendleton, Oregon. We have no questions, and thank you for everything. And we have nine and a dog. And, a and dog. let's see. And what's the dog's name? Colby. All right. <laughs> And thanks for being there. Uh, Port Townsend, Jefferson Healthcare. Any questions, folks? Okay, we can always come back to you. Let's go down to uh, the home of the Cougars, uh, Pullman. Pullman Regional Hospital. We got a new coach, by the way. Did you guys know that? <laughs> I know. He almost makes as much as I do. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, Tenasket, North Valley Hospital. There's and no Thank you. How many? Two. Thank you. All right. Thanks for being there. And is Newport one of the sites that's with us today? And Newport, Washington. Any questions out there in Newport? We have two in attendance and no questions. All right. Thank you so much. Did we miss anybody out in our remote sites? Anybody else have a question? Well, you can always interrupt us. Uh, let's go to our, uh, our folks here in Spokane. Uh, please feel free. You forgot Walla Walla. Oh. Thank you. How many in Walla Walla? You have a question, Walla Walla? Okay, thanks. They're mad. Dayton here. Two people. Well, okay, thank you. No questions. Nice. All right, thanks for joining us today. Uh, Spokane folks, any uh, questions here? For I wanted to say that I've been getting greetings by email. A lot of people are sending their greetings email. Yes, and do you like that or do you not like that? Did, did you hear what she said? She said a lot of people are sending their greetings now via email, which is probably a time saver and a stress reducer. But what do you think about that, the gal in Walla Walla that asked the question? Well, it's better than not hearing at all. Okay. It's better than not hearing at all because some of us have mixed feelings about that, don't we? We like the traditional cards, at least I do, but certainly it's it's a way to save time and you can still communicate with your family and friends. And are any questions here in Spokane? I think for a lot of us who have Parkinson's, um, one of the biggest problems is, I don't know if you would agree, but a lot of people don't get this disease. and. I think the reason they don't is because it's not consistent. We are not, we have up and down days. We have days that we're, that are good and days that are less good. And I think people are used to us just kind of, they want to see us just kind of gradually go down. Well, they don't want to see it, but they expect it to gradually go downhill and it doesn't go that way. And uh, I just wondered if you had any comments on that. My I, doctor keeps telling me if I look sicker, people wouldn't expect so much of me. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. Tell your doctor I disagree with that recommendation. He's hopefully joking. Yeah, okay, good. Um, this is Dayton. Can you hear us? Yes, Dayton. Uh, we are here again. Uh, oh. There's two of us present, and we enjoyed good. the program very much. We're glad to have you Thank here. You. Thank you. Okay, so we have a question on the floor about having Parkinson's and friends and family not really getting it. And that's why the first thing on my list about the holidays being stressful was the fact that you have Parkinson's. And I didn't really go into that, but that is one of the things that I think about is how do you communicate to people how you are doing? And I think you may get tired of trying to do that, but I think that's key is letting people know 
how you're feeling that day, how you're doing that day, and maybe explaining to them that Parkinson's is a little bit like a roller coaster, and it's up and down and good days and bad days. And, you know, you know, it is important to let people know that, you know, what you expect of me may not be what happens. So just, just tell me if you're having a hard time. You know, give your friends permission to say, this is, it's really hard for me to see you having a bad day. Wouldn't you like it if someone said that to you rather than just not saying anything or avoiding you? You know, I've had a lot of clients say, my friends avoid me because of my Parkinson's. So maybe that whole expressing your needs and expectations is part of dealing with that. Does that help? Yeah, you just kind of feel like you're teaching the world and it's scary. It is. It's exhausting at times. So you have to decide how often you do that and, and when you do that, when you're feeling up to it. You don't have to do it every time. Any other questions? Well, the good news is is that we're going to have some great therapy for you that I think probably makes everybody happy here in just a bit when we start singing. I don't know about you guys, but it always makes me feel, feel pretty good, especially during the holiday times. But I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Darrell Holweiler. I'm sorry? Yeah, we have a, another question here. In oh, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Maybe you could, Go ahead. Maybe you could advise me on what you go through to be tested as to whether or not you can drive or whether or not they can take your driver's license away. Do you have a neurologist? Yes. Okay, that would be an excellent question for your neurologist. I think most neurologists deal with the driving issues, and I know the Department of Licensing can be involved with that as well. Um, but that's about all I know about the driving situation. Is that helpful? Well, it's helpful, but... I know it doesn't well, answer my... your question exactly. <laughs> well, the reason I'm asking is I lost my driver's license. And all the doctor did was tap my elbows, tap my knees, had me walk down the hallway mm -hmm. 10 feet. Well, what I can suggest, sir, is that if you're really concerned about your doctor's assessment, is maybe you can go and get a second opinion. And I That's am. What we're doing. Okay, good. And I That's hope that I'm you doing. good. And I hope that you have a very happy holiday. And don't worry about the driving thing till January. <laughs> good idea. Thank, you. Thank you. And for your uh, excellent tips to help everybody make it through the holidays better. And this is our little mascot, Parky, and this is for you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Love Parky. Worth way more than money. Way more. Way more than, than money. money. But anyway, thank you very much. And just a, a few announcements uh, before we start the music. Uh, next month's uh, telehealth is Monday, January the 9th. Okay. Uh, the speaker will be uh, Bill. I'm gonna. I don't want to butcher this, but I think it's uh, Dulash, and it's music therapy, and it's uh, Parkinson's in the brain. So that should be a very exciting one. And also uh, the next. Outside, you'll see there's the current newsletter from the Parkinson's Resource Center. Uh, the next one will be out uh, in, what, late January? Uh, hopefully the second week of January. Second week of January. Okay. And uh, let's see, what else do we have here? A couple other quick things. Uh, I would, well, first of all, I want to say thank you to all of you uh, for joining us each and every month uh, for your support, both uh, in our remote areas as well as here in Spokane. It's been an honor and a pleasure uh, for me to be here, to be part of this, and it's because of you, you folks and your support that makes this happen. So thank you again for an outstanding year. And, you know, we do want to hear from you. So uh, we already, at uh, the last uh, telehealth, there were some suggestions as far as future topics, such as new drugs and research and things of that nature. Uh, we're listening to that, and, and we're looking uh, for speakers that can address topics such as that appropriately. But we want to hear from you. So if you have other ideas or interests, please feel free to tell any of us. Call the PRC. 
uh, share uh, in also in Seattle at Northwest Parkinson's. Let them know uh, what you'd like to uh, learn more about and what would be most helpful to you as you deal with uh, all the exciting things you deal with each and every day. So thank you in advance for doing that. As always, today's program uh, you can get, uh, including the DVD, by calling the PRC. I don't know if the number, it's out front here. Uh, most of you know it, but it's 509-473-2490. Or you can go to our website at www.spokaneparkinsons.org. Anyway, thank you again, everybody. And with that, I would like to welcome Donna on keyboard and Pam, the music director and the crew from Tremble Clefts, to provide some outstanding music. God bless and happy holidays. Before we get into the singing program, I want to tell you a little bit about the Tremble Clefts in case you haven't heard about them. The Tremble Clefts are in their seventh year here in Spokane now. Uh, they were started by Ruth Polnick and a, uh, uh, and a speech pathologist, uh, um, with just four folks, and uh, we're, we have about 40 people now on our uh, uh, regular schedule who, who come in, and uh, uh, once a week we have our sessions uh, on the South Hill, and this has been a, a banner year for us, uh, actually, because we started a new group up on the north side at the Avalon Care Center, and uh, uh, that is currently meeting once a month, uh, we've been able to uh, make this, uh, a lot of this progress in expanding our program uh, through uh, the efforts of Doreen Nicholas, who's the uh, director of the speech clinic at uh, Washington State University, Eastern Washington University, River Point campus. Um, she provides uh, speech language pathology students for us who come in and help us out with the uh, vocal exercises before we get into the singing program. Um, and uh, at this point, it's about 12 to 14 students that we've run through that uh, program. So we're helping to teach these students about uh, what uh, folks with Parkinson's have to deal with. And at the same time, we're getting help in uh, improving the quality of our voices. Uh, so we really appreciate the work that uh, Doreen has done there. And um, uh, that's about it. And uh, this, the entire program here, uh, I think, will help you to drive the blues away. And uh, any of the Tremble Clef sessions that we currently have, I think, throughout the year will help you drive the blues away. So you're certainly welcome to, to join us at any and all of those. There, is, there are no membership dues. There is no uh, requirement for showing up a set number of times. You just have to come on out and want to have fun. And uh, now uh, Donna will tickle the keys there, and we'll get into our uh, program as soon as I get to the beginning of it. Here we are.
Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to laugh and sing a sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. A day or two ago, I thought I'd take a ride. And soon Miss Fanny Bride was seated by my side. The horse was lean and lank. His fortune was his lot. We got into a drifted bank and then we got upside. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Okay. He's getting ready. <laughs> Rudolph, Rudolph needs a costume change here first. <laughs> okay. Okay. The red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose, and if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright. Won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then all the reindeer loved him, and they shouted out with glee. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, he'll go down in history. Foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then all the reindeer loved him, and they shouted out with glee. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. Okay, who can tell me which one of Santa's reindeers was Rudolph's father? No. What was that? Which one of Santa's reindeers was Rudolph's father? No. <laughs> According to the Burl Ives special that was just on a couple of days ago, it's Donner. I, I never knew that. <laughs> here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. Dixon and Hudson and all his reindeer are pulling on the rain. Bells are ringing, children singing, all is merry and bright. Hang your stockings and say your prayers, cause Santa Claus comes tonight. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. He's got a bag that is filled with toys for boys and girls again. Hear those bed bells jingle, jangle, oh, what a beautiful sight. So jump in bed and cover your head, cause Santa Claus comes tonight. Sing, 
city sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas. Children laughing, people passing, meeting smile after smile. And on every street corner, you'll Strings of street lights, even stop lights, blink a bright red and green as the shoppers rush home with their treasures. Hear the smoke crunch, see the kids bunch. This is Santa's big scene, and above all this bustle, you'll hear. That's a wrap, folks. We hope those that drew, drove the blues away for you. And uh, like I said, come on out anytime you would like to uh, uh, join us uh, in, in our regular weekly sessions. And, uh, yeah, and we have one more performance yet this week at the uh, Eagles Lodge up on the north side. Uh, this year, uh, and I might just say that uh, uh, we've done, after we do this one next Thursday, It'll be five performances that we've done this year. And uh, we'll, we, we sing at uh, uh, care centers, and uh, we do the uh, annual Street Music Week, Doug Clark's annual Street Music Week downtown, um, as well as the Christmas performances. And we're going to try and see if we can increase our uh, performance schedule even more. I, I think a goal should be to do one a month. Anyway, thank you very much, and a Merry Christmas. Thank you.